Hey, welcome back to How Search Works. I'm usually Gary, an engineer on the Google Search team. In our last episode, we explored how Google finds and downloads new and updated web pages, a method called crawling. In this video, I'll talk about the next stage in the process, indexing. Once the page has been crawled and rendered, the next step is figuring out exactly what's on the page and determining some signals that will help us decide whether we should index the page. Google wouldn't be very useful if it didn't understand that some pages are recipes, some pages are articles, and so on. Likewise, if the individual words and phrases are not extracted from the downloaded pages, users would have a very hard time finding them. Simply put, this is the process of indexing. Indexing includes processing and analyzing the textual content, key content tags, attributes, images, videos, and calculating signals that Google can use to rank the pages in its search results. First, Google parses the HTML and fixes any semantic issues it may have encountered. This will make sure that all the HTML tags are in the right place and where they need to be. For example, one of the most important elements in HTML is the element which typically contains metadata about the page itself in the form of meta tags and link tags. There are very few valid HTML tags that may appear in this section of the HTML. And if an unsupported tag is used, Google, and also other browsers, will forcibly close the element right before the unsupported tag. This will leave any other metadata out of the element, rendering them useless for indexing purposes. Once the HTML is in a suitable format, Google determines if the page is a duplicate of another already known page. And which version should be kept in the index, the canonical version. Right, but in this context, the canonical version is the page from a group of duplicate pages that best represents the group according to the signals we've collected about each version. For the most part, only canonical pages appear in search results. Sure, but how do we know which page is canonical? I know, I know, I know, I know, Stop I know. Stop it. Go away. Okay. So, once Google has the content of your page, or more specifically, the main content or centerpiece of a page, it will group it with one or more pages featuring similar content, if any. This is duplicate clustering. Then it compares a handful of signals it has already calculated for each page to select a canonical version. Signals are pieces of information that the search engine collects about pages and websites which are used for further processing. Some signals are very straightforward, such as site owner annotations in HTML like rel canonical, while others like the importance of an individual page on the internet are less straightforward. Each of the duplicate clusters will have a single version of the content selected as canonical. This version will represent the content in search results for all the other versions. The other versions in the cluster become alternate versions that may be served in different contexts, like if the user is searching for a very specific page from the cluster. But let's move on to index selection. Once the signals are collected and duplicates dropped, Google decides whether or not to index the page. This process is called index selection. It largely depends on the quality of the page and the signals that we've previously collected. If a canonical page does get indexed, then we store the information that we collected about it and its cluster in the Google index. Google's index technically is just a large database sitting on thousands of computers. However, 
talking to it the right way, it returns results highly relevant to whatever we are asking. Okay, but how? I'll answer that in the next episode, which will be about serving and ranking search results. Until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe for more search content. Thank you.